iPhone 11 Pro Max versus iPhone 12 Pro Max, which to buy. By the end of this video, you're gonna know which one is the right iPhone for you. Now, let's just quickly br briefly brush over the price point. The 11 Pro Max, you can find this thing for 650 to 900 right now. It is over a year old, so it's definitely not the newest, but Apple discontinued this because they brought this one in. Doesn't really make sense to make the same, you know, type price phone in the lineup. So you gotta kind of find this one secondhand. Maybe you could find it refurbished in the Apple Store. Who knows? But over here on the 12 Pro Max, you're gonna pay. 1099 and up so definitely more of a price tag here okay guys so the first impression of these two phones is gonna be the body and boy do they feel a little bit different definitely they have the same type of material so there's nothing cheap about these these things are sitting on top of the food chain they are at the king they are the top dog when it comes to the premium feel we do have stainless steel on both but look at the difference on the edges we do have rounded versus square now do keep in mind that that iphone 11 pro max does come in at a slightly thicker 8.1 one millimeters somehow some way the iphone 12 pro max is 7.4 so it is thinner but it is weightier at 228 grams and because it's a little bit wider than the iphone 11 pro max it definitely feels like a bigger device 6.7 inch screen dominates over the 6.5 but i gotta say with them both having ip68 dust and water resistance they both have that textured glass back capable of wireless charging you really can't go wrong with either. The main difference here in the way they feel is that the 11 Pro Max feels a little more comfortable due to those curved edges over here. And I would say the 12 Pro Max just feels solid with that squared edge. Definitely feels a little bit more flatter, even though this is a flat phone, this just feels even flatter than this phone over here. But this does dig into your palms in the corner a bit. I would just say the 11 Pro Max is more comfortable. You could argue that the 12 Pro Max looks better with its squared edges. You could say it's aesthetics here for the 12 Pro Max. Maybe you like form, you like beauty more than you like the practical feel or the more comfortable feel of functioning this phone every day. All right, guys, so what about the display differences here? Both of them have that Super Retina XDR OLED HDR10 and display they're capable of a ridiculous 800 nits of usable brightness what does this mean this means that you probably will only need this in direct sunlight indoors this thing will blind you it's so bright on the iphone 11 pro max and 12 pro max but that variability gives it a more premium feel because a lot of phones you, you'll tweak the brightness up and they don't even go any brighter than once they get right here they just stop getting brighter but they're saying they're getting brighter you know what i mean if you got one of those devices over here in apple news you can see we have the same exact ppi on both of these 458 pixels per inch they actually have literally the same aspect ratio as well at 1959 so very similar overall experience. I think this phone looks a little yellower. I got True Tone on. I must have True Tone before somebody says, why does that phone look red or yellow? But both of them, very similar displays. So where do they actually differ? Well, the 12 Pro Max is just slightly bigger. Look closely, just very slightly. The phone is 6.7 inches versus this phone, 6.5. In addition, there's one other change with the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the bezels are slightly thinner as well. So they look a little bit more sleek on the edges. However, it doesn't really look like Apple really reduced the notch size on either phone, which is starting to get pretty old and dated feeling. But I gotta say in terms of smoothness, both 60 Hertz, so you can't go wrong either way here. So if you were to pick one in display, if you gotta have the most, the largest size, the 6.7 is slightly larger, but it's not really gonna change your experience or usability day to day because they're both huge displays for smartphones. So when it comes to software, one of the areas where Apple is most consistent, but also makes a lot of users pause when doing an upgrade is the software. It's the same thing. It literally is the same experience. And this is good. If you bought an 11 Pro Max, you wouldn't want to be outdated after only a year. Uh, you're going to have probably four or five years of updates on the left there. So you can see in this picture, it does look a little bit bigger, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but really it's just the usual camera upgrades. You got that raw mode, you got that 2.5X, you can go 12X, couple of things in video, you can do HDR video. So I mean, really, it's almost, it's actually basically the exact same software experience with me giving the slight edge to the 12 Pro Max for having a couple more cameras 
features and this 12 pro max will give you maybe an extra year versus the 11 pro max but you got to decide if that 400 dollars is worth one extra year so when it comes to performance the only thing i've noticed different is the iphone 12 pro max is six gigs of ram will allow this phone to just hold applications better. And for power users, you will notice that, you will like it, that basically nothing ever reloads. Whereas you can get some reloads on the 11 Pro Max if you have a ton of things open and you're bouncing between a lot of applications. Now, this does have a five nanometer A14 Bionic chipset, so a little bit more advanced than the seven nanometer plus over here for the A13 bionic but here's the thing when i was using the 12 or the 11 pro max i never actually was craving more performance as a matter of fact i never even thought about that i was just like how are they going to upgrade this thing it's so fast it's so good on the 11 pro max i just don't know or care to see how much are they going to upgrade this i mean really 5g was the main changer here in terms of performance i feel like over just the processor because this is so fast it really is so if you if you're looking to buy one of these phones in terms of just having the fastest phone yeah your geek bench you could flex with this phone you could flex on the benchmark scores but it probably won't really matter in the future what will really matter more is that the 12 pro max features 5g and that's what's going to change the game for this phone and future proof it over the 11 Pro Max. Now, better value in storage is the 11 Pro Max right now because you can get a 256 gig for the price of a 128 gig 12 Pro Max. However, the starting price of these phones was the same and this year's 12 Pro Max is a better value in terms of its starting storage. At 128, you can get this at 64 and uh, 64 was kind of low even when this came out and giving you six gigs of RAM across the line gives us just a better overall memory from a memory standpoint. The iPhone 12 Pro Max is just a better overall pick in terms of that. Okay guys, so when it comes to the cameras, it's easy to look at these and say, well, they both got triple cameras on the rear. It's the same camera. Well, yes and no. It's very similar in that they're both triple 12 megapixels here. So you're gonna get very consistent results. They both have ultra wide angles and they can both telephoto zoom as well as take a really good standard wide. So how do they differ? Well, first of all, you can go 10X here, or 2X optical for the 11 Pro Max. So on the 12 Pro Max, you can go even farther than that. You can go 2.5X here on this phone, or you can go all the way in the 12X. So it can zoom farther, that's the first upgrade. The second one, you can do HDR video when you're doing it all the way up to 4K60 on this phone at 10 bits. So in crazy amount of technical video performance, I mean, people are mainstream consumers, probably won't even understand what that means or definitely won't be needing it. But here's what I can tell you about both phones. They do have the same front facing camera. So literally like identical performance on the front, 12 megapixel cameras on the front capable 4K 60, they match up with the rear very well. The back cameras, the main thing is this, you have a wider aperture on the iPhone 12 Pro Max that lets more light in. Photos and videos look brighter, a little bit more colorful and a little bit brighter. But other than that, they're very good cameras, very competitive. And the iPhone 12 Pro Max does give you IBIS, so in-body stabilization, so your photos and videos will virtually never have any blurring effect, super consistent results. Whereas if you take a photo very fast or a video very fast, you might see a slight blur on the 11 Pro Max. Other than that, the results speak for themselves. Every time you take a photo on either one of these phones, you're getting ridiculous results for a phone. Now, people will argue, no, you should just get a camera, but I've made videos with the iPhone that got over a million views on those videos and nobody even gave a crap that I was shooting it. I shoot, I shot the thumbnail and the video and nobody cared that I was shooting it on the 11 Pro Max. And this year just takes it up a notch, gets it a little bit brighter and a little bit better. But I don't think this is a crazy upgrading camera and if you're trying to save some money, you're still getting a boss camera in the 11 Pro Max. So battery life, which one is better? Well, I can tell you right now, the 11 Pro Max, because it's using 4G, it seemed to have a longer battery life, a little bit bigger battery as well. I got about an hour or two better on this phone, but that's not to say that the 12 Pro Max is bad. At around 36 to 3700 milliamps, this one could still make it easily through a day stretching into two. But when you do kick off the Wi-Fi and you throw on 5G, this one can drain a little bit of battery life. Both of them very good though. These are the best of the best from the iPhone line. Biggest batteries in iPhones, you're lasting all day no problem but i would say 
pick the 11 Pro Max if you want the slightly better battery life over the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Okay, I wanna talk about audio real quickly. I'm not gonna play a song here or nothing, but these two both have stereo speakers and they both get very loud and full, but onto phone call quality, reception, 5G, stuff like that. The phone call quality from both of these is excellent, superb. However, the reception holds on much better for this phone right here, the 12 Pro Max, having the Qualcomm modems. This has Intel modems on the 11 Pro Max. They squashed that beef, and now we have a Qualcomm back on here with the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and it's make a world of difference, especially when you get out of major metropolitan areas, you get out in the suburban areas and stuff, you're holding on to that signal much better for the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So after using the 12 Pro Max for a few months here, a couple months, I don't know, it's been a little bit of time, these two phones right here, which one to buy? Which one is for you? Well, here's how you can break this down. If you know you're not dependent on the most pro camera features in the world, but you still want a really good camera, and you your 5G sucks in your area, or they just don't have it, it's basically non-existent, or your carrier's just not doing a really good 5G right now, you think you can wait on that. The 11 Pro Max is good for three years or better, definitely. It's a really strong choice still. It's still a really good phone, and I don't think you're gonna be missing much. The 12 Pro Max is for you if you love 5G. 5G works very well in your area. You want next generation bleeding edge of iPhone. You want the squared edges taking you back to the old squared edge days. And you just want the all out best iPhone you can buy right now. Then the 12 Pro Max is definitely the phone for you, especially if you want the biggest one as well. You can also argue that, well, I can get the 12 or 12 mini for around the same price as the 11 Pro Max. Yes, but you are getting smaller screen and worse battery life. So weigh that in account. I think it's the cameras and 5G that really matters this year. How much do you value having the best cameras because these are still some of the best and how much do you really value having 5G? Cause that should be a main question, 5G between these two. So whichever category you felt yourself more gravitated toward what I was, what I was just saying about which one to pick, that's the one you should definitely pick up and buy. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and let me know which one you're picking or which you would pick down below in the comments section. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Nick here, be sure to be well and peace.